Well, hello. Today, I'm, we're going to do another rodeo. This time, we'll, we're going to take a look at the Pilot Custom 823, which is a fun vacuum filler that you've seen many times and for many years on this channel, and the Pelican M800, which is a pen that appeared more recently on the channel. So, how do these compare? Is there a reason to compare them? Don't know. Don't care. We're going to compare them anyway, so let's dive into it. All right, so this is the Pelican M800 and the, Pe and the Pilot Custom 823. I'll just briefly mention that I considered doing the Pelican M1000 here, but I would say it's a... Lengthwise, it's probably equivalent to the Pilot, but girthwise and nibwise, it's a different animal. So we're going to stick with the M800, so you'll you'll get to see why. But I just want you to know that I did briefly consider the M1000. So let's take a look at these two pens. So from the outset, you can see that they are both quality pens. The Pilot is a little more restrained. I mean, this, this uh, finish on the Pelican is definitely very gaudy and showy and luxurious looking. This Pilot, when you first look at it, you don't, you may not even realize what a nice pen it is. Then you study it and you go, oh, that's subtle. Um, just taking a look here. The Pelican has a nice finial. The Pilot does not. Pilot has this subtle Pilot branding right here. The Pelican has a beak for a clip. Nothing on the finials. Uh, of course, the Pilot is cigar shaped. The, the Pelican is more flat topped. Open them up, and I think you'll see why I decided not to do the M1000. These aren't exactly the same size nib. They are both broads, but, uh, but they are very comparable in size. The grip sections, very comparable. So these are comparable pens, I think, whereas the M1000 would not be. Now, uh... The Pilot Custom 823 is a vacuum filler, which uh, you can click on the link to the video about that pen to see how that works. This pen is a piston filler. The M800 is a piston filler. Uh, it's back-weighted. I can feel it wanting to lean back, but if I hold it in my hand like this, it has some weight to direct it down on the paper. Brass piston knob in here. Now when I do the same with the Pilot, it's definitely a lighter pen. I, d I don't really do masses and such on here. That's all easily available information. But it's not back weighted. But enough weight to it to have a presence on the paper. So let's take a look at it writing. The both of them writing thing both. All right, so now that I've got something for the camera to focus on, that's the Pilot Custom 823. Has a broad nib. The ink in it is Iroshizuku. And although my dishwasher is running, I think you can hear that this is a very quiet pen. Not a lot of feedback here. Uh, as far as flex, not really. There's a little bit of line variation. It's a comfortable nib. It's a 14 karat gold nib, but hardly a flex nib. Wetness and flow. I think you could tell before I did this, but uh, it's a wet pen. I like it. I may have mentioned that before. Eh, it's pretty wet. Smear test. Pretty wet. And, of course, the world-famous Pierre Gustafson test. Which I think it passed very well. I'm going to zoom out just a teensy bit here. And we'll do the <coughs> Pelican M1000, give it the same, or M800, sorry, give it the same treatment. What's that? Yeah, I have the same ink in this one. Used it up too. I am done with this ink. Uh, 
Uh, I'm definitely feeling more feedback on the paper with this pen. I also think I just ran off the screen. That's okay. Nothing important. Uh, flex. Now one thing I am noticing, some people will call it singing. This pen makes some squeaking noises on the paper. It doesn't bother me, it's just a thing that I don't have with most pens. Wetness and flow. I'd say it's not quite as wet as the Pilot. Nothing bad, just not quite as wet. Smear test. You can probably see that it's not as wet just by the... There's less shading in this writing. That kind of worked out the same. And the world-famous Peer Gustafson test. There was one skip there, but I think it was my fault. So on the whole, these are two good pens. Now before I leave this, the same ink, the Pilot does a little bit darker, but it, in fairness, I've refilled the pen a number of times with the same ink without washing it, so that may have something to do with it. Um, how about broadness? So look, especially these hashtags. In fact, let's just come down here and do two of them close together. Oops, so the, we'll do the Pelican over here. And we'll do the pilot over here. You know? That's the pilot. Here's the Pelican. I don't know that those look all that different to me. I mean, maybe with no pressure, the pilot's a little less broad. The pilot... Pelican. Yeah, I, I guess you could argue that the the pilot's a little less broad. I'm actually surprised by this result. To be honest, I expected the uh, Pelican to be much more broad than the pilot, and it's not. Surprise! <laughs> Alrighty. Two very good pens to write with. Felling mechanism, I don't much care. Because once it's filled, I'm writing with it. I mean, it's kind of fun to fill a vacuum filler, but you can't really see it in the Pilot anyway. You can't see the piston in this one. Both pens can be held up to the light, which I can't simulate on the camera, but you can hold them both up to the light and get the ink level. So, uh, yeah, very comparable pens. So now, we'll flip over to the other camera and tell you what I really think. So that was the rodeo you didn't know you needed. <laughs> where you compared the Pilot Custom 823 and the Pelican M800, and you briefly saw the Pelican M1000. So, I'm going to give you the short version right away, and then I will talk about why. Short version, the Pilot Custom 823 is staying. I now own two of them. I'd like to own a third one in the medium nib. Uh, the Pelican M1000 is staying, even though it wasn't really part of this video. The Pilot M800 is in my group of pens I plan to sell when I get that all organized. Is the Pelican M1000 or M800 a bad pen? No. It's a very good pen. It's a very quality pen. I just have other pens I like better. So I don't use it. That's what I discovered. Fun fact, when I started doing my pens in use series, part of that was to find out what pens do I actually ink up and use and which ones just sit in the shelf. Guess what I learned about the Pelican M800? Yeah, it's a shelf sitter. So that one is going to go off, hopefully to find a better home. When I get that all organized. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you why, briefly. The, Pel the Pilot Custom 823 feels better in my hand. When I'm writing with the 823, I don't think about writing. I just think about the words. When I'm holding the M800, I'm thinking about the pen. It's something about it. Its feel just keeps reminding me that it's there. One of my big markers of a good pen for daily use and regular use has to disappear in my hand. Pelican M800 doesn't do that. Whatever that ineffable thing is that 
makes it disappear. Uh, the Pilot Custom 823 does that extremely well. The much less expensive Lamy 2000 does that extremely well. Um, and I haven't figured out what that magic is. Some pens have it and some pens don't. Um, the Pilot, the Pelican seems weighted properly to fit better in your hand. It seems sized better. It definitely feels more quality. It looks more quality. But I like the 823 better. Uh, I did not try writing with them posted. I don't do that, so uh, it's just not something I ever think of. I would guess that posting would make the pe the Pelican more back weighted, and probably both of them more back weighted. But you know, the Pilot is a is a lighter pen. It just seems like a better pen. And if it's not lighter, because I didn't weigh it, um, it feels lighter. Like I said, it just disappears in my hand, and I write, and oh. Three pages are done. And uh, that doesn't happen with the M800. M800 drags a little bit more. And I like feedback. I like the Aurora 88 feedback. I like the Platinum's feedback. It's something about Pel that M800. I just don't like the way their feedback feels. It's more kind of draggy rather than we're feeling the paper. Like we're driving with the brakes on. So, fun fact, a little um, off topic here. I used to have a neighbor who was quite elderly, like 80s probably. And if you got behind him, he would drive with the brakes on almost continuously. Like You'd be going up, there was a mountain near my, the house where I grew up, where the, the highway went over the mountain. He would be going uphill over the mountain with his brakes, pet, brakes on. Um... <laughs> That's kind of what it felt like writing with this pen. I can't imagine the poor man's brake pad bill. But anyway, the, it, it was just like the brakes were on. So uh, there you go. Uh, if, if you have another comparison you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments. They don't have to make sense. I, I'm doing mostly these high-end pens that I own. So like the Aurora 88, maybe Platinum 3776, maybe. Uh, Platinum President, which is discontinued, so I'm kind of on the fence about that. Aurora 88, uh, the Pilot Custom 823. Oh, Parker Dual Fold is another one. And oh, let me know down in the comments if there's a comparison that you're just desperate to see. So, well, thank you for watching. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.